Sierra Nevada Corporation has officially unveiled the Freedom Trainer Jet, signaling its bold entry into the United States Navy's undergraduate jet training system program, which seeks to replace the decades-old T-45 Goshawk fleet. This move places the company into a high-stakes competition that will determine how future generations of naval aviators are trained, not only in basic flight skills, but also in the demanding tasks of carrier operations and tactical readiness. By presenting a clean sheet design that emphasizes both cost efficiency and operational durability, SNC positions itself as a disruptive contender against industry giants like Boeing, Lockheed Martin, and Leonardo. The Freedom Trainer's debut comes at a pivotal moment, when the Navy is balancing the urgent need for advanced training platforms with broader pressures to keep procurement affordable, flexible, and technologically forward-looking. Unlike its rivals, the Freedom Trainer is not a derivative of an existing aircraft, but a purpose-built platform designed specifically for naval training. This distinction carries major implications for performance and adaptability. The aircraft's most notable feature is its ability to execute carrier touch-and-go maneuvers and full-field carrier landing practice to touchdown, a capability that remains unique even though the Navy recently removed it as a formal requirement in its solicitation. This ability directly addresses one of the longest-standing challenges in naval aviation, preparing pilots for the rigors of carrier landings without prematurely wearing out frontline combat aircraft. Built with a 16,000-hour airframe and fitted with trailing link landing gear engineered to endure repeated heavy impacts, the Freedom is designed from the ground up to survive the harsh realities of naval training cycles that stress both pilot and machine. The economic dimension of the Freedom Trainer is equally significant. Powered by two Williams FJ44-4M engines, the aircraft is expected to deliver a 40% reduction in engine-related expenses compared with current Navy trainers, and nearly a 50% reduction compared to jets designed primarily for land-based operations. This translates into projected flight hour costs of around $4,500, a substantial improvement over aircraft powered by heavier engines like the General Electric F404 or the Honeywell F124. Longer sortie durations, up to 40% greater than the Navy's existing platforms, also add value by maximizing training time for every flight hour. From a budgetary perspective, these numbers are critical. With more than 200 aircraft expected to be procured by 2030, every percentage of savings translates into billions of dollars in long-term life cycle costs. The design's modular open systems architecture further enhances affordability by ensuring that the Navy retains control of upgrades and future technology integrations, thereby avoiding dependence on proprietary systems that have historically driven up costs and limited flexibility in military procurement. The Freedom's development history adds an additional layer of intrigue to SNC's proposition. The aircraft originated during the company's partnership with Turkish Aerospace Industries in a bid for the U.S. Air Force's TX Trainer competition. When that partnership collapsed after Turkey shifted toward developing its indigenous Herjit Trainer, SNC shelved the project. The Navy searched for a new training jet, however, gave the design a second life. Refocused and refined, the Freedom reemerges today as a platform uniquely aligned with naval requirements. What was once a dormant concept has been transformed into a mature, purpose-built aircraft with clear advantages in durability, cost efficiency, and adaptability. Technological innovation is another area where the freedom distinguishes itself. SNC has partnered with Red Six to integrate the Airborne Tactical Augmented Reality System into the training ecosystem. This helmet-mounted system allows pilots to experience virtual threats in real time, including enemy aircraft or simulated missile engagements during live flight. Such synthetic training environments bridge the critical gap between basic flight instruction and advanced tactical preparation, allowing pilots to sharpen their combat skills without requiring costly adversary aircraft. This approach has already been tested successfully with both the U.S. Air Force and the U.K. Royal Air Force, lending credibility to its potential impact in naval aviation. By embedding augmented reality into the training pipeline, 
SNC is not merely offering an aircraft, but an entire ecosystem designed to replicate combat conditions more realistically and affordably than ever before. The strategic implications of SNC's proposal extend beyond its technical and economic advantages. For decades, the U.S. defense industrial base has been dominated by a small number of prime contractors, with newcomers rarely able to disrupt the status quo. The Freedom Trainer challenges this pattern by positioning SNC as a credible alternative provider of advanced, long-life aircraft. Should the Navy select the Freedom, it would signal a broader shift in procurement philosophy toward valuing cost-effective innovation and digital design sovereignty over legacy advantages. Moreover, the Freedom's adoption by the U.S. Navy would resonate internationally. Allied navies in Europe and Asia, many of which face the same problem of aging trainer fleets, would likely consider the Freedom as a model for their own modernization efforts. In this sense, the Navy's decision could shape not only American pilot training, but also global standards for military aviation in the 21st century. While the Navy has yet to assign specific funding for the UJTS program in its official budget documents, the projected contract remains a multi-billion dollar endeavor. Estimates suggest an initial order of 145 aircraft, expanding to more than 200 units as the program progresses. Vice Admiral Daniel Cheever has already emphasized the importance of advanced avionics and realistic simulation in shaping the next generation of aviators, underscoring the Navy's awareness of the stakes involved. SNC, for its part, has invested heavily with its own capital to bring the freedom to maturity, betting that its aircraft combination of low operating costs, long service life, and advanced training technologies will prove irresistible to decision makers. By offering full data rights up front, the company also addresses one of the Navy's most consistent frustrations with previous procurement programs, the inability to control or adapt systems independently of the original vendor. The unveiling of the Freedom Trainer at the Tailhook Symposium therefore represents more than the launch of a new aircraft. It is a signal of how naval aviation intends to evolve in the coming decades. The Navy is under pressure to modernize its training systems in a way that both prepares pilots for increasingly complex operational environments and remains fiscally sustainable. The Freedom Trainer embodies that balance by merging carrier landing capability, cost reductions, and augmented reality systems into a coherent platform. Its development journey, from a sideline project in the Air Force's TX competition to a leading contender in the Navy's UJTS program, also highlights SNC's resilience and adaptability in an industry often resistant to new entrants. As the Navy moves closer to its 2027 contract award deadline, the competition will intensify. Traditional aerospace giants will rely on their established reputations, global reach, and existing supply chains to make their case. SNC, however, offers something that may prove even more compelling. A clean sheet aircraft designed without compromise for naval training, equipped with technologies that align with the future of combat aviation and priced to meet the Navy's urgent fiscal constraints. For the pilots who will train on these aircraft in the decades to come, the Freedom represents not just another jet, but a bridge to the future of naval air power. For the Navy itself, it presents an opportunity to redefine what it means to prepare aviators for the challenges of the 21st century setting a precedent that could ripple across allied fleets worldwide. In the end, the Freedom Trainer is more than a new aircraft. It is a statement of intent. It reflects Sierra Nevada Corporation's ambition to reshape naval training with a platform that combines durability, affordability, and cutting-edge innovation. It reflects the Navy's recognition that training the next generation of aviators cannot rely on incremental improvements to aging systems, but requires bold steps toward purpose-built solutions. And it reflects the broader reality that military aviation is entering an era where simulation, augmented reality, and digital design will matter as much as hardware. Whether the Navy ultimately selects the freedom or not, its unveiling has already set a new benchmark in the conversation about what pilot training should look like in the decades ahead.